Beloved intercessor, leader, servants of God, pastors, friends, anywhere you are around the world, we bless you. And okay, today I'm starting something a little different. I made up my mind. Some people cannot make up their minds. You know, I, sometimes I have a rough time making some of these decisions, but thank God I'm here. We're going to do this, okay? And I tell you, um, I want to share the entire teaching that I, I believe I never shared before in its entirety of a new, a series of, on the subject, the purification of our desires. Because this teaching, if we take the time to really learn it and assimilate it, will take us to a new level of holiness. Many Christians didn't even know it existed, this level of holiness. It's a purity that is incredible on this earth, but it comes from God, like all holiness comes from God. Uh, as you, some of you know, I, I have been ministering in Lakeland in the Hispanic Church with Danilo Montero's congregation, and... We stay an extra day this time. This is the third time I ministered in that church. Uh, did I say Lakeland? Lakewood, Houston, okay? Uh, with, uh, with Pastor Danilo Montero. Uh, he wasn't there. He was in Ohio this time, but he entrusted me to the church, and I was able to preach, and then we, my wife and I stay an, an extra day. On the next day, we had a meeting with some area leaders and pastors, just a few of them. And I brought this teaching, at least part of this teaching, uh, uh, one fraction of this teaching. When I finished, one of the pastors, Pastor Randall, he said to me, Pastor Sergio, this is a book. And I thought, oh, I should have read that book. Where is it? Give me the name of the book. No, no, this is a book that you're going to write on this subject of the purification of our desires. So I came highly motivated to write this teaching. But maybe first I'll teach it to you and see how it goes, right? Uh, this is the preliminaries. But actually, as I say, the first time we're going to teach the entirety of, their, uh, of this teaching. And then um, we are doing this on premiere, at least this first segment. This is going to be many segments. This first segment, we are doing a premiere. And some of you may wonder, Pastor, if you're going to do that, why don't you do it live like you used to in Facebook Live and so forth? I will tell you why. Because when I try that, and then my schedule uh, is, uh, I start traveling, uh, 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 and on the weekends it's very, very hard to predict. Sometimes I prepare it so well, and I schedule it at the right time, but the airplane was delayed four or five hours and I couldn't be there live. So I rather use a system that doesn't completely depend on me. Now I'm planning to be with you. Probably right now you'll see me chatting there because when we are on premiere, we share a live chat. And I urge you, I encourage you to express your amens, your support, your joy, any questions you may have or suggestions. Just go ahead and write. So that's why we are using this system, because I think it's more feasible than the live meetings that I have tried for so long. And so many times I have to say, I'm on an airport, I cannot tape live and so forth. So that's the reason. Okay, here we go. The purification of our desires, a new frontier in holiness, a, a totally new level of holiness. And I'll be honest with you, up to a few years ago, I didn't even know this was a biblical level of holiness. My dear friend, Steve Swihart, he's a doctor in theology, PhD. Uh, we have worked on projects together. He has been part of my team or my board. And he said this, the desires that are not from God are wasting your time and your strength. The desires that are not from God are wasting your time and your strength. Friend, do you have a desire that is not from God? Some of you might say a hundred of them. Okay, thank you for being honest. Please understand this. When we have desires that are not within the will of God, it's like adding apps to a telephone. It wears out the battery. It drains the battery faster. And if you have a thousand different desires like that, your spiritual battery is going to 
drained very quickly. And there are Christians with a battery problem. Their spirituality, their patience, their joy, their holiness, it seems like it lasts a very short time. And then they have to regroup because they lost it. It shouldn't be like that. But the desires that are not from God in your life are wasting your time and your energy. Let me tell you this. Desires can redirect the will and empower your soul. Not every desire is bad. The inventor of desires is God. But he wants us to have holy desires. And so desires are good as long as they are purified. That's what we talk about, the purification of our desires. They are a magnet to your destiny, a powerful attraction that God wants to use and sanctify in your life. So you shouldn't be in constant fight against your desires. Rather, the evil desires you deal with them, you put them to death, but then receive the desires that comes from God. Amen? Successful business people, they are often driven by powerful desires. For instance, Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, many of you know the supermarkets, Walmart. He said, I must admit that there was probably not a day in my adult life that I did not think of retailing. He had a desire. This man has a had a tremendous passion to build a business and to sell items. And he did. At one point was the biggest business in the world. You, do you know that Sam Walton, by the way, he has been, he was our brother in Christ. He is in heaven now. But he was saved. He was a, a Sunday school teacher and a strong business person. So uh, his, um, his book is very inspirational if you can get a hold of that, okay? So what is your ambition? What is your main desire? What is what drives you? What is that helps you wake up early in the morning and full of energy? Is it a desire from God? Notice that God provoked desire on his people. God showed the stars to Abraham. God calls Saul to open the eyes of the lost. Even the calling brought some inspirational aspect. God wants to inspire you with his dreams and his desires. Amen. Now, uh, we were ministering in Illinois time ago, and a young lady came and she said, Before I was saved, my desire was to cut myself. Self-cutting, self-inflicted pain. That was her crazy desire. But now that I am set free, she said, my desire is to set other people free. Now she has a desire from God. I believe in the transformation of our desire. Matthew 16, 24. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. In other words, if anyone wants to, in other words, holiness, following Christ begins with a desire. Let's pray together. This is one segment, many more to come. Okay, bear with me. Let's stay together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that this teaching will transform minds, tendencies, addictions, uh, shameful passions, into a passion for you and for souls. I pray that your Holy Spirit will seal this teaching with fire in the hearts. We love you, God, and we know you not only purify our steps and our actions, you can purify even our desires. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.